It's Friday night in the small town of Crescent Cove, where jaded cop Curtis Mooney is doing his rounds and checks in with fellow police officer Dave. Up at Makeout Point, there are quite a few high schoolers running their evening physical education classes if you know what I mean. Mike Tobacco and Debbie Stone are on a first date and having a great time drinking champagne when Mike's comical friends the Terenzi brothers arrive in their ice cream van and try to sell ice lollies to the young lovers. They are promptly pelted with all kinds of garbage until they go elsewhere to annoy other people. They are startled when a strange sound can be heard moments later as a shooting star whizzes overhead and seemingly falls nearby. A local landowner also sees it and thinks a comet has landed on his property. He starts counting his chickens and thinks he can make some coin out of it. He takes his adorable bloodhound Pooh to go have a look. Debbie convinces a hesitant Mike that they should go to see if they can find where it landed. On his search, the old fella stumbles upon a circus tent in the woods. He becomes suspicious when he can't find an entrance and there are no people around. A hole appears in the tent and Annette comes out and snatches Pooh away, which sends the old man into a rage. He punches the tent, but the material is hard and when he then grabs a guy rope, he is zapped. A huge stupid looking clown-like creature approaches and shoots him with some kind of ray gun. Over at the Crescent Cove police station, Curtis is being a right twat by roughhousing a couple of students he has arrested for drinking in the park. Even the other cop, Dave Hanson, thinks he is being a prick and has a go at him. Curtis dismisses Dave as a noob. Mike and Debbie drive to a spot a few miles out of town where they discover the weird glowing circus tent. A sensible Debbie wants to leave, but curious Mike wants to see more and drags her along. They find an entrance to the tent and go in to find a weird-looking passageway, which leads them to a room with three doors. Mike manages to open one and on the other side, they find a massive chamber. Debbie, being the smart one, says that this is the shooting star. Through another door, they find a huge room with bunches of cotton candy hanging. They soon find that there are dead people hanging in the cotton candy cocoons and recognize one as Joe Lombardo. A clown enters the room and starts to chase them with a popcorn gun and when they escape, another clown makes a balloon dog that tracks their scent. Say what now? <laughs> this is absolutely nuts. They make it to the truck in time to get away and manage to run the balloon dog over and hit three clowns in the process. The clowns are uninjured and start walking with their huge feet towards Crescent Cove. Mike and Debbie erratically arrive at the police station. They tell Dave the haps, but unsurprisingly Dave is somewhat skeptical, but does want to know more. Mooney, on the other hand, is sarcastic, doesn't believe a word of it, and mocks and insults them, including Dave. They go in Dave's squad car to investigate. Somewhere in the town park, a man finds a puppet show and is being entertained when one of the killer clowns from space, killer clowns from space, sounds kind of silly when you say it like that. Oh well shoots him with a ray gun that wraps him in a cotton candy cocoon. The clowns have arrived in town now and are checking out the drugstore where two people have been cocooned and some clumsy clowns are trashing the joint while the storekeeper is looking on helplessly. Meanwhile, Dave insists that Debbie either goes home or stays in jail while they check out the spaceship. It also turns out that Dave and Debbie were a couple at one point, hopefully not when he was police and she was in high school, that's almost as weird as the clown invasion thing. Talking of which, the clowns are now going around abducting the citizens of Crescent Cove. When Dave and Mike arrive at the woods, the spaceship is no longer there. Dave gets angry, accuses Mike of screwing with him, and cuffs him. Back in town, a tricycle riding clown stops at the local biker club only to be mocked and have his trike smashed by a loudmouth thug. The clown gets revenge when he has a boxing match with him and literally knocks his block off, which scares off the big hairy bikers. There is another ugly ass clown at the burger joint trying to coax a young girl out while her mother is distracted. Before it can mallet her, the mother unwittingly saves her just in time. Man, these clowns have some terrible dental hygiene, haven't they heard of flossing? Driving back to town, Dave swings by makeout point only to find a number of empty cars, with one of them filled with cotton candy and Bob McCreed's glasses. It dawns on him that Mike was telling the truth and then he unshackles him. Mike says, They got him. He's dead. Over at the police station, everyone's favorite small town cop is inundated with strange phone calls reporting the clowns are causing havoc in town. 
Mooney thinks the whole town is playing a prank on him, even when the drugstore clerk calls in and then goes silent. He is determined not to be fooled, regardless of how many lives it may cost. Over at Debbie's, she plans to take a bath. Some of the popcorn that attached to her from the popcorn gun falls to the floor and starts moving like it is alive. There is more of this living popcorn at the burger joint where one of the clowns puts some in the dumpster and shortly after a worker is dragged into the dumpster by whatever is in there. On the way back into town, Dave is apologizing to Mike when they see a clown performing shadow puppets to a group of people. They see the clown make a dinosaur that gobbles them up and the clown puts them in its bag. Mike hits the gas and steers at the clown, which jumps out of the way. Dave radios Mooney, who still thinks they are messing with him, and cuts them off. They see the Terenzi brothers, so Mike decides to go with them to warn the townsfolk while Dave heads to the police station to alert the state police. Back at the police station, Mooney is ignoring all the ringing phones when his uppance has just arrived in the shape of a seven-foot clown. He still thinks it is a prank and when the clown squirts him, he cuffs it but its hands come off. He puts it in a cell with the two students and belts it in the back of the head with a flashlight but the clown is not impressed. The clown then playfully smashes Mooney's head into the bars. One of the students says, What are you in for? Dave arrives at the police station to find the students have been cocooned and the clown is using Mooney's corpse as a kind of ventriloquist dummy in order to tell Dave. All we want to do is kill you. Dave shoots it but the clowns are bulletproof until he shoots its Achilles red nose which causes it to explode. Who knew? Mike and the Terenzi brothers are driving to Debbie's when they stumble upon an industrial scale cocooning operation literally hoovering up the townsfolk. Mike has the bright idea to get the flock out of there. Once out of the bath, Debbie is attacked by the monsters that the popcorn has morphed into. She is able to fight them off with a can of hairspray, though. The clowns are really interested in getting Debbie alive. They've surrounded her home and are able to capture her in a huge ray gun balloon. The ice cream truck gets there just in time to see a clown drive away with Debbie in a clown car. I'd say you couldn't make this shit up, but someone clearly did, and for that, I am thankful. They chase the clown car and are seen by Dave who gives chase too but rear ends the ice cream truck. Dave gets in the truck and drives them to the fun fair where the spaceship is now parked. A fun fair security guard tries to stop the clowns but gets pied. He ends up as a soggy mush on the floor and to add insult to injury the clown tops him with a cherry. You can say what you want about the clowns but they do have a sense of humor. The boys arrive and go into the spaceship and find their way to the room where Debbie is. The room is now filled with human cocoons, which the clowns drink from. They rescue her from the yellow balloon, but alert the clowns, which chase them awkwardly with their big-ass feet. They are being chased by all the clowns now and make it through many strange rooms until they arrive in the main stage area. Oh no, the room is filled with blunt object wielding clowns that look like they will bash their skulls in, a scary situation. They climb onto a platform and it is not looking good for our plucky crew. Then all of a sudden the brothers Terenzi, Rich, and Paul crash through the wall in the ice cream van. They talk through the microphone and order the clowns to leave Mike, Debbie, and Dave alone by pretending to be a clown leader. Shockingly, this seems to work in the clown's freeze, giving the crew time to bolt. Before they can escape though, a massive clown lowers from the ceiling then runs after them and destroys the van with Rich and Paul Terenzi in. Debbie and Mike escape the tent while Dave is left inside shooting at the clown's nose until he's out of ammo. Outside, state troopers arrive just in time to see the spaceship starting to take off. The uber clown picks Dave up and is about to swallow him when Dave uses his police star to pop the clown's red nose, killing him, which explodes the whole spaceship. You'll never believe it, but moments later the clown car lands in the car park and Dave and the Terenzi step out unscathed. I guess after everything so far it isn't that much of a stretch. That is it for this one. What do you think? Thanks for watching. Peace out.